This town has the most single track in America. With nearly 300 miles of single track, you surely can't go wrong. We're talking Bend, Bend Oregon. Oregon. And my goal is to help you with the decision making of where to stay, where to eat, where to ride, if you decide to visit this adventure mecca. But be warned, this is a quasi dirtbag travel video. To ease into our soft landing, our move is to hit market of choice. They've got every genre of food you want. Industrial, noise, drone, golf, indie. And then you bring your winnings to the lodge so you can just be comfortable for the night and prepare for a day of getting rad or lame or whatever you want to do. You, you, you pick that part. And the move is to come off season in the fall while everybody's kids are in school. There's just like a lot less people. But you gotta contend with the cold. It's just part of the give and take. Less people, trickier weather. As long as you have the right gear, well then, what do they say about gear or weather? It's not about, there's no bad weather, just improper gear. How many gloves are you bringing? Our move is quick outs and coffee in the hotel room just to expedite the process. Okay, you're bringing two pairs of gloves, an inner and an outer. Inner and an outer. I might have messed up here. All three of the gloves I brought are basically the same weight. They're selling this rental bike, 250 bucks. That seems like a good deal. That's a really good deal. It has begun. It will begin, and it has begun. Look at this crazy feature, just in this gated suburb. What the hell? <laughs> I haven't ridden this bike in a while, and I'm excited to ride it, but I'm actually looking forward to the point at the end of the day where I've had too much of it, and I'm burnt out, and I just can't, I don't even want to look at it anymore. Bend is this funny adventure town. Limitless miles, there's alpine skiing, cross country skiing, lots of bike culture, cool shops, adventure, everything. To the point where it's a little obnoxious, but when you realize that only happens in small pockets, it's actually pretty precious. And because it's so cool, it's an expensive place to live, which is kind of a bummer. That doesn't mean you can't visit. You could do the soft landing like we did and stay at a place like the lodge, or you can easily post up in boondock out here in the woods. The choice is yours. Basically, I'm saying you don't always have to spend a lot of money to get down in a rad place like this. My budget dirtbag friends out there, they know this. Just trying to keep our mediocre mountain bike dreams alive. This zone is usually pretty sandy, so it gets dried out fast, dusty, and loose. But today the conditions are really good, making it just the right amount of duffy. Velvety duff, velvety pine needle duff. Whoa. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. yeah. As you can tell, a lot of these trails are very drop bar friendly. Oh, I'm so winded. But we've actually never done any of these trails before with the flat bars. And to me, they kind of seem optimized for hardtail. But also, there is a ton of gnarly stuff to be found. This is not a mellow trail network. This is a very diverse trail network that can be done with a wide variety of bikes. Or you don't even need a bike. Look at how red this road is. Whoa. I decided to ride a hardtail today because I knew that these trails would be optimal for that experience. I opted for my Ibis DV9. It's a purple trail eater with SRAM GX transmission group set, Envy hoops, and enough swagger to fill your gullet. This bike has all the right vibes in all the right places. Woo! That waffle is amazing. What is it called? It's called a liege waffle. Some Belgy shit. Woo! 
Totally rideable. <laughs> this stuff is freeze thaw, and a lot of trail networks throughout the world do not want you to ride bikes during freeze thaw season. Bend is one of those miraculous places where the freeze thaw isn't quite as big of a deal because the soil is so sandy, it just moves with the freezing. So that means you can ride it in the shoulder season. It is a windy one today. Wind gusts expected up to 40 miles an hour. This feels like a winter ride. Oh, yikes. Oh, it's good, now it's raining. I'm getting a little fracked out. We're only about halfway through this thing and yeah, I'm already seeing uh, the walls are getting, they're getting closer. Time for excuses. It's my first real ride back in over four weeks and I'm not used to the snow and the sun is in my eyes. Oh God. You all right? Took a little tumble there. I was worried about you. Oh man, dropping 500 feet in elevation made a world of difference for the vibe of the ride and the terrain. This stuff is much more rideable. There's not the looming death of a winter oh blizzard God. happening. This is where we need to be. Closing into the end of this, I am dead legging it, hobbling for the last few miles here. One of the craziest things about this route is that it ends right into the lodge property. But we're not gonna end it here. So we really like El Sancho's, good tacos, good vibes. It's delicious. Good design, even. I mean, look at the layout of that. Look at this. Don't touch that, that's mine. Oh, and this place has a brick and mortar, but we just actually saw the food truck version on the way to the brick and mortar, and it was connected to a brewery, so it just, I don't know. What would you do after six hours on the saddle? Hmm? Little guy just can't get enough. Bend is such an adventure town. It's a very unique space in the realm of cities. That was a, that was a full send. And the ride by the numbers? Six hours and two minutes rolling time. 54.2 mountain bike miles. They're, they're just different. 5,261 foot of climbability. Scooting up the chutes. Oh man, and there's a hot tub? I was too embarrassed to shoot it because there were other people in there. But man, I gotta admit, really hit the spot. Ron, to be totally honest, I feel like this story is getting out of my hands. And I'll put links to everything down below. You know, like the route and where we stayed and where we ate. It's all, it's all there. Now check out this video where riding companion Drew Tyndall and I head to Mount Shasta to ride the craziest gravel event we've ever ridden.